which, uh, of course, as we've pointed out before, we were united. There was no separation there between Catholicism and Orthodoxy. And um, as you will see, some of the Eastern Fathers definitely had a strong view as to viewing Peter as the rock uh, of Matthew 16. And uh, Augustine, uh, particularly, is interesting to point out a number of individuals uh, of various Christian uh, denominations uh, seem to attempt to separate uh, or eliminate the primacy of Peter by claiming that whenever a father mentions Peter's faith as a rock, that that indeed means that they are not identifying Peter as the rock. And uh, at least in, in Roman Catholicism, I'm not sure what your thoughts would be on this, but at least in Roman Catholicism, when we hear the fathers mentioning Peter's faith as the rock, I believe that it, it is inseparable to separate. It's not possible to separate Peter's faith from Peter, the man himself. So I believe, in a sense, it would be um, identifying Peter as the rock as well. What would your thoughts be on that? Yes, it's it is certain that the uh, the confession of faith, which in an ultimate sense is the rock. So to confess. Jesus Christ as the Son of the Living God and the Messiah, that is, of course, in an, in an ultimate way, the foundation of the Church's existence, but this cannot exist apart from someone making it. And so, um, uh, it, it's clear that in Chrysostom, for example, in an ultimate sense, the confession is the rock, but that it cannot be separated, or it's not really in contradiction with a particular individual, namely Peter, making that confession. And I, I would tend to to say that uh, the very name, of course, uh, uh, Peter, <laughs> indicates that uh, you know it means rock. So um, very clearly, when the Lord renames um, Simon Rock, that of course uh, Peter is the rock, at least in an instrumental sense, uh, in an in a in an ultimate theological sense, uh, the confession of Jesus Christ, of course, uh, is what constitutes the, the church, but that always happens uh, through individuals. And so, uh, clearly, the um, fathers and traditions of East and West uh, can see that these two views are, are uh, complementary, and, um, and that properly expressed, uh, there's no doubt that uh, there is um, in Peter a, a rock-like quality which comes as a gift of the Holy Spirit. Um, and and this, so ultimately, really, of course, the, the confession is the rock, but it's inseparable from this particular moment where, where Peter um, is established as um, having a unique authority, a unique role in the church. That's a very good point. I think that going back to, um, to the, the statement of the Joint Catholic and Orthodox uh, and Rabina, I think it's important that we, uh, we examine it and we realize uh, one particular line that really, uh, really should be important to all Christians, um, both on Orthodox and Catholic sides, is that we read in this um, particular line I have in front of me, and I've read it over and over many times, and it's, it's a wonderful line. It reads, the exercise of authority accomplished in the Church in the name of Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit must be in all its forms and, all, at, and at all levels a service from the Greek diakonia of love as well as that of Christ. And I think that's, it's very important that we, we realize that we need to be united in love and instead of attempting our best to spread heat and anger, we need to do our very best to be united. As I believe it, it, it's definitely the biblical model to want to be united to do our best to try and be in communion with one another 